Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel, and this is my review for Sanjuro, which is the 1962 sequel to Yojimbo, once again directed by Akira Kurosawa, and brings back to Shiro Mifune as the original man with no name. In this case, he makes up another name for himself like he did in the last movie. This movie revolves around the samurai who finds himself in the middle of a plan hatched by a young man and his group of samurai to try to free the man's uncle, who has been wrongfully accused, and the samurai, once again played by Toshiro Mifune, realizes that this group is not really all that bright in terms of their planning, so he reluctantly comes along to help them because he's got everything worked out, as we saw with the last movie. Now, speaking of that last movie, Yojimbo was such a big hit in 1961, one of Akira Kurosawa's most popular films, that the script for this movie was actually reworked to include this character. And in my opinion, it's... Here's the weird way to describe Sanjuro for me. I like how it's a sequel that doesn't repeat what the original did. It's quite different in its own way. But that being said, I don't think it's really that great of a movie. I mean, the reason why I didn't go into Sanjuro right away after reviewing Ojimbo was because I'd seen Sanjuro a long time ago. I own it on Blu-ray with Yojimbo, and I've honestly never thought it was one of Kurosawa's best films. That's not to say it's bad, and by me saying the movie is not all that great doesn't mean that it's a bad movie. It's just, considering that Kurosawa just made constant masterpieces like Rashomon, Seven Samurai, Hidden Fortress, Throne of Blood, Yojimbo, Sanjuro just comes across as a movie that it's not bad, but it just doesn't quite hit the level of quality that other Kurosawa films seem to hit. Let's get the good out of the way first. The best part about this movie is Toshiro Mifune. Every time he is on screen as this character, he commands it. And what I really love about this movie is that we get a little more development with his character than we did in Yojimbo. Throughout a lot of the movie, he comes across as kind of lazy, and he's such a smartass to the characters who are actually trying to be the heroic ones. But you can tell that he's the smartest man in the room. And there's actually one character in this movie that sums up the samurai perfectly, in that his praise for someone might come across as insults. And that's where the dark humor from Yojimbo subtly comes in, to the fact that this character is completely sarcastic, and a lot of what he says sounds like backhanded compliments, but he's actually very supportive. And we also find out that he really doesn't want to kill people unless it's absolutely necessary. Which on one hand, it kind of contradicts Yojimbo, mainly the end of the movie and the first three people that he kills. But at the same time, it adds another layer to this character who we just thought was kind of invincible and just kind of ruthless. And once again, like with Yojimbo, we get to see that this guy really plans out scenarios. He can just take a look at someone and just know who they are and what they're thinking. And like I said in the Yojimbo review, he is like Steve Rogers, where he is in a room with this time more than six people and he can kick all their asses and kill all of them, not get a single scratch. So he is definitely tough and the movie is definitely as entertaining as Yojimbo is, but unfortunately the thing that kind of brings this movie down for me is that the rest of the side characters aren't that interesting or even all that memorable. When you look at a lot of Kurosawa films, you remember a lot of the characters in those movies, even if they're supporting roles. The two runaway soldiers in the Hidden Fortress might be the characters that kind of drive the film's story, but they really are supporting characters in the sense of who is the most important character of that story. And you remember them. You remember a lot of the characters that were in Yojimbo. You remember the sake brewer. You remember the coffin maker. You remember that crazy town mayor. You remember the Andre the Giant looking guy. You remember the only character in the movie that actually has a pistol as opposed to a katana. In this movie, there aren't really any characters besides from Sanjuro himself that you remember. 
If you're a Godzilla fan, there are certainly some recognizable faces here. Once again, Takashi Shimura is in this movie in a small role. You see Dr. Serizawa himself, Akihito Hirata, as one of the other samurai in the group that Sanjuro is helping out. But outside of actor recognition, they don't really stand out compared to a lot of the other characters from other Kurosawa films. And that might be the only complaint that I really have about the movie, because the movie itself is still very entertaining. It moves at a very great pace. Masato Sato's score is once again really good. But in comparison to those other Kurosawa movies, I don't think that this one is as influential as Yojimbo, The Hidden Fortress, Seven Samurai, or Rashomon. And again, there's nothing about these side characters that make you go, I remember that character. But still, for what it's worth, I think it's good, just not all that great. Again, there's a reason why I kind of skipped over Sanjuro after I finished Yojimbo and went straight into the Man With No Name trilogy. It's because I don't think this is one of Kurosawa's best. But still, I think it's at least worth checking out, just don't go into it expecting it to be great like Yojimbo was. And there you go, that's my review for Sanjuro. And one last little bit of trivia, despite everything that I just said about this movie, this actually ended up being Toho's highest grossing movie of 1962. That's right, the same year King Kong vs. Godzilla came out, so... That's certainly a win. So that's the review, but before I go, I want to make an announcement. My Critics Association, the Hollywood... Critics Association is putting together a movie and TV trivia thon this Saturday, May 16th, on their YouTube and Twitch channels. And we're basically holding this trivia thon to help raise money towards relief for coronavirus. So there's going to be some special guests, it's going to be fun, there are going to be prizes. If you want to go ahead and play the game, just make sure to tune in to the show. I'll post some more details about this event on my Twitter page. But you can also look up Hollywood Critics Association on Facebook. You'll get more info right from the source or go to hollywoodcriticsassociation.com for more info there. But make sure to check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. May 16th, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Hollywood Critics Association YouTube channel and Twitch channel. So with that announcement out of the way, now I want to know what you guys think about this movie. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed the review. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, Leave a comment, support my Patreon page, follow me on social media, and until then, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.